Welcome back to KETV News Watch 7's Chronicle. This morning we're discussing concussions. Told you about the research at UNL trying to make sure athletes stay safe when they're playing. But there is a way to get a balance between fitness and safety. And here with us this morning is Ann Nelson. She's Director of Rehab Services and Sports Medicine at CHI Health. And also where Tom Beeler is an athletic trainer. Thanks very much for being here. Uh, Ann, yeah. I want to I ask you, uh, what kind of impact can a concussion have on a child or a teenager's physical fitness? Sure. I think we know that concussions have a wide variety of impacts on, on kids, on adults, um, physically, um, with, with symptoms like nausea, vomiting, um, lack of coordination, um, cognitive, so difficulty focusing, difficulty with memory, um, emotional, it can cause irritability, um, altered sleep patterns. So there's a whole host of things that can come along with a concussion. So I think that's really important why you have to have a wide variety of people helping to monitor kids after concussion from parents to educators to athletic trainers on the sidelines because they just impact so many areas of kids' lives. Does that take special training to be able to identify if, a, if your child has some kind of possible concussion? Sure, and I think that's where we tap in to right. the athletic trainers that um, actually are on the sidelines, they can see it and recognize more of the clinical symptoms. But I think parents have a pretty good idea of talking to their kid when something doesn't maybe quite seem right. And I think the more education we get out there to kids to say, it's okay, please speak up about those mm -hmm. things. This is your long-term health that we're talking about. I think that gets, um, I think the word is getting out there about that. Right, and so Tom, I mean, you're, you're, you're the, the trainer. You, you yes, can sir. see this. Uh, so if someone gets a hit on the field, uh, they come across, what, what do you look for? Uh, <clears throat> it's easy when you know the athlete pretty well. So when you know their mannerisms, it's, it's pretty easy to pick up on those things in the sidelines. Um, Thankfully at Millard West where I am, we have a great culture of concussion reporting and supporting those athletes coming forward. So you, initially after the hit, you'll look for some unsteadiness, um, maybe a little bit of lack of coordination, not wanting to get up. Uh, a big one that I see a lot is this, just trying to, to rub it out uh, oh. you know, of your head and make yourself feel better. So um, any various signs and symptoms because no concussion is alike. So we look through all the host of different signs and symptoms they can display and just try to keep our eyes out for them. So it doesn't have to be necessarily a headache or I answered like nausea or vomiting. I and mean, that's gotta be hard to, do you just work off a baseline or how do you know? It's, it's very subjective and you're relying on a, a young man or woman to give you that information yeah. to make that decision moving forward. So. Um, the easiest thing you can do is be vigilant and make sure that if you have any doubt whatsoever, you pull them from participation until you can truly rule out a concussion. And moving forward, you make sure that they're 100% without concussion, without any sort of, of brain injury, uh, and that way we're keeping them safe. And that's the law now in Nebraska too. It's been for a number of years, absolutely. right? Absolutely, absolutely. And Anne, what exactly are the steps to getting better? Is it just time or what? Yeah, um, you know, most concussions are self-limiting. You know, most kids will get better in, in seven days, but 10 days. Um, but there is a small portion that, that don't get better um, that are a little bit trickier. So the view on concussion has changed. So years ago, we might say, you know, don't do anything. Sit in a room and, and keep dark and, right. and be quiet and, and, and don't challenge the brain. But we're really looking at concussions now as rehabable injuries. So um, working with uh, athletic trainers, working with um, rehab providers like physical therapists, speech therapists that can help kind of tap into the, those brain connections and trying to graded, in a graded way, get kids back to activity. Um, there's a lot of different approaches now that help um, progress recovery, but do it in a monitored way that's safe. Because, yeah, it used to be. I mean, just the last couple of years, people would say, don't let them read. Don't mm -hmm. let them take tests. And that's no more with that, right? Yeah, it's a balance. So mm -hmm. um, our, our CHA health athletic trainers are, are in the schools and they work collaboratively with school counselors to try and try mm -hmm. and form plans about um, return to learning. It's not just about return to play. That's, you know, that's what athletes probably mm -hmm. focus on is getting back on the field. But yeah, there's, a, there's certainly a strategy around learning and what um, alterations might, might be needed in the classroom as well. And Tom, you've seen, uh, you've heard the argument that people say kids shouldn't play contact sports. And it's not just football. I mean, there's soccer, there's mm -hmm. basketball, which I played and took a number of hits. Uh, yeah. What do you say to those people? Um, <clears throat> I would say that it's, 
You know, it's important, and I understand because you have your child's uh, health in, in your best interest, but you can, you can get a concussion driving your car to school that morning. You know, you can get a concussion during any various activities that you do, and I would say that the more that people like the various people we've inter you've interviewed for this piece and mm -hmm. um, the, the great people at CHI, all our rehab specialists and athletic trainers, we are constantly working on different ways to make it a more safe environment for those kids. And based on the number of concussions that we see uh, across the board, I would say that we are doing a pretty darn good job of, of trying to reduce those numbers and trying to make sure it's a safe environment for all to participate in. And is there, is there an idea of a non-contact sport where you can, I mean, we talk about team building mm -hmm. and, and exercise, physical fitness, very important. No one will disagree with that. So what options are there for kids? Oh, there's a ton of options. Yeah. I think in the, in the U.S. there's something like 120 sports that kids could get involved in. So we tend to focus on the big ticket items, especially here in the Midwest. We're right. pretty focused on football, but there's so many other sports out there that kids can get involved in, like cross country and swimming and track and field. Um, and golf and tennis. So I think it's just exposing kids to a lot of different activities and letting them choose what's the most fun, what speaks to them the most. It doesn't have to be contact that keeps kids' attention the most. Um, there's just, there's a lot of different opportunities out there. And we know specializing in a sport isn't actually the best for the kid. Um, mm -hmm. It's not the best from a physical development. In fact, sport-wise, they, they tend to excel more when they do multiple sports. So letting kids experience different things, different sports, and they don't all have to be contact sports. And Tom, any advice for parents? I would say um, talk to your kids. You know, start the conversation about concussions early. Make sure that they know the gravity of the situation, how important it is just for your future health, because these kids are thinking one step ahead. So it's our job to really think 15, 20 steps ahead for them and just let them know that there's nothing as important as your own physical and obviously mental health. And the, the more forthright you are with the, your, your symptoms that you may be experiencing, even if it seems insignificant, it's very important to report that to your parents and then to your coaches and athletic trainers as well. It's got to be tough to convince a teenager of that, though. It is. Of course. Right. Tom, and thanks very much for joining me. And, and good luck. And keep working with the kids and doing the great job y'all are doing. Thanks. We will. You Thank bet. you. When we come back, we're going to hear from a pathologist making breakthroughs in concussion research. First, we have a reminder, your comments are an important part of the show. We always read them, so if you want to be heard, email them to news at KETV.com. Love hearing from you, and we'll be right back.